On your marks. Get That's set. It. Go. Yeah, go, Martin. Go, Cheetah. Chris, aren't you gonna cheer for your brother? Hey, somebody's gotta root for the cheetah. Wow, a running cheetah is a beautiful sight to see. Martin's trying really yeah. hard. Close. Oh, not so close. Oh, so you were the blur I saw going by. <laughs> you win that one, blur. Woo! And the Criteria took a beating. It's a great off-road vehicle, but no human-made vehicle can handle this rough terrain at <laughs> cheetah speed. Hmm. We'll see about that. Let's see. Cheetah sneaks? No. Criteria? No. What invention could match cheetah speed racing across the rough and tumble African savanna? <laughs> Don't waste your time, Aviva. The cheetah is the fastest land animal on Earth for a reason. It's the perfect design for running across rough ground. You can't outrun a cheetah on the African savanna. No way. Uh, yes way. No way. Yes way. I'm going to invent an invention that can run faster out here. Faster than a cheetah, faster than anything. No way. Will you stop saying that? That wasn't me. Yes, it was. Wait a minute. I recognize that voice. Of course you do. It's the voice of the inventor you wish you could be, spying on you from within my spy cloud. <laughs> you didn't even know I was here. <laughs> I should have rained on you. Nice. Oh, you're just jealous because I have always been a better inventor than you. Oh, really? What about at science camp when my potato clock kept better time than your moldy bread clock? Or the time... Oh, forget about that. You're only as great as your last invention. I want in on this racing contest, and this time, you're all gonna eat my dust. Oh, yeah? Okay, this is getting very interesting. Two inventions duking it out in a cheetah race. Well... I'm sticking with the natural speedster. Nothing can beat the fastest runner on the savanna. Oh, big surprise. Ah! What's wrong with it? <laughs> Nothing. She just thinks you look like a vulture. Ha, ha. What's with the spots? It looks sick. <laughs> Cheetahs have spots. That's what makes them beautiful. Beautiful? Ha! You know what's gonna be beautiful? When I beat that sick kitty and you in a race. You're on. Let's have a race. My cheetah racer against your ZTV. That's a Zack terrain vehicle. Yeah. What if the cheetah wins? Oh yeah, <laughs> that scrawny thing wins a race, right. Well, you'll have to beat her fair and square. This is a ground race, so no flying vehicles. Here he goes with the rules again. And no using animals to power your machine. That's not only mean, it's cheating. No cheating. Only cheetahing. <laughs> That's okay. Me? Cheat? Never. Okay, we have three hours to complete our inventions. And then we race at sundown. Winner is the world's best inventor. Okay, let me have a look at you, Blur. What design features give you your speed? Well, for starters, the four L's. The four L's? Light, long, lean, and lanky. Yeah, she is skinny. That makes sense. The lighter she is, the easier it is to push herself forward quickly. So my invention has to be light. And they'll kill a cheetah or even a cheetah cub any chance they get. 
That chirp means hide. A special chirp for each command. Now Blur is going out to distract the lion. She's trying to lead the lion away from little... Oh, what am I going to call him? Now that is one clever way to avoid predators. Cheetah style. Spot speed. A light, lean running machine. Ooh, here's my chance to update and improve my cheetah racer. Bring up the cheetah racer. Mm hmm. Hmm. Blur lures away lions with her cheetah speed to keep her cubs safe because little cubs can't run fast yet. Check out the racing stripe. Black fur on his back with a white stripe down the middle. I wonder why a cheetah cub has that and his mom doesn't. Hey, where is his mom? I'll use my cheetah vision to find her. <gasps> there she is. Here we go, a cheetah hunt. She has to catch a gazelle to feed her cub. the fastest land animal on the planet at 100 kilometers per hour. What about that one? Too gray and wrinkly, boring. Oh, there's another. Too many stripes, I'm getting dizzy. Oh, how about that one? Too tan and hairy. None of this will work for my line of safari winter wear. Hmm? Stop the car. <gasps> That's it? Spots and speed spectacular. Look at those crazy turns. My cheetah racer has to turn like that. Blur has to catch it fast or she'll run out of energy. Yeah, this wildcat can only run at top speeds for a little more than 500 meters or 45 seconds before she's totally exhausted. Huh? Oh, just missed. Oh, and now she can't run fast at all and is really vulnerable to predators like the lion. Uh-oh, where's the lion? Whew, he's walking away. Well, that's good, but I meant really vulnerable to predators like Danita Donata! Blur, look out! I don't know much about nature, but I do know one thing about cheetahs. Once they've run, they're done. Blur! No! We've got to save Blur. To, to the, the Creature, creature Rescue! rescue. Okay, Blur, check this out. I'm injured. Oh, oh, my leg. I can't run fast anymore. I hope a predator doesn't see me. Yes, my trick is working. Predators usually target injured or weak prey. They're the easiest to catch. Ow, I'm so injured. Huh? Uh-oh, it worked, but on a different predator. A python's got a hug on me. Pythons are constricting snakes. That means they squeeze their prey until they can't breathe anymore. This wasn't exactly the plan, but I'll take it. Oh, could you please press that button for me? Yeah, it's the one. Ow. Woo. Yes, I'm a python. Wait a second. No animal eats adult pythons. I'm at the top of the food web. Woohoo! Not so fast, Chris. We're checking something. What? Yep, it's right here. It almost never happens, but big adult pythons are sometimes caught and eaten by a super hungry lion or leopard. You mean kind of like that? Whoa, 
You gotta be pretty hungry to tangle with a python. Whoa, not this time. Catching food can be dangerous business for predators too. Prey defends itself, and getting a meal isn't always easy. So it's official. It's rare, but leopards and lions will tangle with an adult python if they're desperate. Wow, I better slither off and follow that lion. Gotta slide. See ya, Blur. Okay, I know a lion would eat a bad eared fox, and you probably have to be on the lookout for spotted hyenas, too. Hey, if I could just find one of those. <laughs> I know you probably don't want to find out, but I have to finish my food chain. Huh? <gasps> Marshall Eagle! Whoo, nice move! The old roll on your back, kick and bite defense? Ha! A battered fox classic! Hey, it's not easy being an animal when things are constantly out to get you. Huh? No. See what I mean? A pike! Hey, Martin. Gotcha. What? Crest? <laughs> you're a python? Yeah, and you're lucky I'm not hungry. Because we eat bat-eared foxes. Yeah, whoo! It's rough out here. I know. Animals always have to be on the lookout for another creature trying to catch them. Imagine if humans had to live like that every day. Hey, we're almost there. One more creature to find. See you at the top. I'll be waiting for you. We're almost there. Wow, it's close now. Yeah, just some top predators left, like lions, leopards, crocodiles, martial eagles. It can get pretty confusing in the middle there. Yeah, like look at the baboon. He eats things down here like grass, roots, and fruit. And he's eaten by things up there like leopards, cheetahs, and pythons. Yep, just follow the lines to figure out who eats who. All those lines make me dizzy. I know. That's why it's called the food web. All right, bro. The moment of truth. Let's find out who's the strongest. Rhino power. Elephant power. Excellent. My disruptive bots will make their creature power suits go haywire. Won't Chris and Martin be surprised? An elephant is so strong, he can push a 15-meter tall acacia tree over with his head. Oh! Rhinos have charge strength powerful enough to push over a four-ton truck! Oh. Hey, Chris, you look thirsty. Oh, yeah. How about a drink? <laughs> and elephant powers win! <laughs> Woo! Not so fast, bro! Yeah! <gasps> you forgot about the rhino horn! Huh? <laughs> Whoa! Ow! 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 Ah. Woo! Yeah! Huh? Oh yeah, the tip of my nose is more powerful than the tip of your nose. <laughs> A slam dunk into the mud puddle will prove that elephant powers rule over rhino powers. <laughs> Disrupt now. <laughs> Leaping lizards! I'm an acorn? Aviva, the creature power suits are going crazy! <gasps> oh no! Ah! Oh! The basilisk water running feet don't work too well in a dry grassland. I can't grow here, if I even wanted to. Whoa! Martin, quick, deactivate me. Elephants are omnivores, they'll eat nuts. Good thing basilisks are climbers. On any kind of trunk. Whoa! Ah, no! 
<laughs> well, that was kind of nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Loving it. <laughs> Uh, just for one day. Wouldn't you like to be that strong? Aviva, what in the world is going on with these creature power suits? Uh, I don't know. A glitch or something? I'll be right there. Oh, no, you're not. My Disruptobots not only work on creature power suits, but on turtle ships, too. Ha! Hey, Chris, you feel a need for speed? Always. So then how about a race between the world's fastest runner and the world's fastest flyer? You're on a 300-meter sprint. And to make it fair, we both have to start from a dead stop. OK, so even though a Peregrine Falcon's top speed is 380 kilometers per hour, and that's faster than the Cheetah's top speed of 113 kilometers per hour, the Falcon has to fly up and gain height before she can tuck into her high-speed dive. We'll be the first ones to find out who's the fastest animal in a 300-meter race, cheetah or a peregrine falcon. On your marks, get set, go! Huh? A moose is on the loose! <laughs> So let me get this straight. So the wolf pack was starting to surround you. Hey! Was he with the pack then? No, at four weeks, he's too young to go on the hunt. Well, he's attacking my controller! Come on, Jimmy, his teeth are just coming in. He's gotta try him out on something. Well, all the adult wolf teeth were already in. I didn't want any of the big dogs trying those out on my moose behind. So, I knew before they closed the circle around me, I had to do something. Chris, deactivate! Get out of that moose suit! Well, hooves don't work that way! Well, then work them the way they work! Run! Sometimes these creature power suits are too... creaturey! But remember, a moose can't outrun a pack of wolves for long. You'll have to think of something else soon! <sighs> can't run anymore. Think of something else. <gasps> Antlers. Could they be the weapon against wolves? Antlers work on one wolf. Uh, uh-oh. But not on a pack, because moose only have antlers on one end. And wolves can surround a moose and attack from all ends. Uh. Ooh. But a moose can swim. Yeah. Chris, are you OK? What are you doing? The Moosey Paddle. The Moosey Paddle? <laughs> Good one, bro, the Moosey Paddle. Oh, come on, guys, give me a little rest. Chris, while you cool off, I'll track the pack. Wait up! Oh, no, Moose Hooves. How am I gonna deactivate with Moose Hooves? So where were you during all this? Little Howler. Well, if we keep following the trail of the story, you're going to pop up somewhere. How'd you get out of the moose suit, Chris? Well, it wasn't looking too good until I got a tip on a twig from a moose. Well, look at that. 
A moose can grab and hold sticks with its lips. Deactivate. Back on Wolf Patrol. What was going on with you, Martin? Well, I had fallen way, way, way behind the wolves. And when I finally caught up with them, I discovered they had caught up with a moose. <sighs> Woo, hey guys. What did the wolf say to the ravens? How's it going? <laughs> you like that, huh? What? I am not slow. I don't have wings. Must be nice to be a raven. At least you can fly. Oh, I get it. You warn the wolves if anyone approaches. And they take you to lunch. Smart. Wolves and ravens make a great creature team. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. You wolves just ran 15 kilometers, pulled down a 900 kilo moose and devoured it? And now you're off and running again? Okay, I'm coming. Sorry, Aviva, can't wait any longer. Activate creature powers. Activate creature powers. Okay, and there, 300 meters away, the Tortuga is the finish line. On your marks, get set, go! Cheetah's running powers only last around 300 meters. It's an all-out sprint, and I've got to run my fastest from start to finish, 113 kilometers all the way! A falcon can't fly faster than a cheetah runs in a straight line, but if I gain my dive height and tuck into a peregrine dive, I can go faster than a cheetah. And even though Martin has a head start, I think I can catch him at the finish line. <gasps> now, it's time for my genius to be revealed! What? Fast power? Here? I heard about flying fish, but on the African savanna? This is ridiculous! Ah! I'm a walrus out of water! I'm a fish out of water! And that's worse! Bass powers are great for a lake habitat. Yeah, and walrus blubber is great for keeping warm in icy oceans. But here on the hot African savanna? <sighs> you don't want walrus powers. We don't belong here in these powers. <gasps> and they know it too. Huh? I can't deactivate. <clears throat> I can't either. <clears throat> oh, these are the times I really appreciate hands. Ow! I wouldn't do that. Ow! I'm telling you, you don't want to mess with walrus powers. See these tusks? I've really got the wrong powers here. Help! This vulture thinks I'm a fishy snack! Hold on, bro! I'm coming! to the creature rescue! Oh, but not with two tons of walrus blubber. Ah! Hey, Chris, did I hit the button? Chris? Wolves are nature's best marathoners. They just run and run until they get what they're looking for. And we're looking for wolves by running like wolves. So, you're doing a wolf marathon? Trying to catch up to the world's best long distance runner by running? I think you'll be back before breakfast. Yeah, to wolf down some breakfast. That's the only wolf we'll be seeing this morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got a backup plan. Just in case we can't catch up or keep up. I've got the old trusty plan B right here in my back pocket. Hmm. A moose suit? Uh, I don't know, Chris. 
How'd that work out for you with the gazelle suit and the cheetah? Whoa! <sighs> She tackled me so fast. That was different. The cheetah's a sprinter. The wolf is a marathoner. With the wolf, I'd have time to deactivate. Wolf track! <laughs> Definitely dog-like. Dog claws always show up in the tracks. Four toe pads, one heel pad, 15 centimeters from toe to heel, 10 centimeters wide. Definitely too big to be a fox or coyote. Oh yeah, it's definitely wolf. And more than one, a wolf pack. I'd say about five different wolves. What? What part of the track is telling you that? Three silver ones, two black ones. What, where do you see that? And one white one. How in the world can you tell that from these tracks? Well, actually, you kind of have to look at the big <gasps> picture. Whoa! Now that's a wolf pack! Well, who would have thunk it? Maybe the best way to find wolves is just to be out in the wild talking about wolves. Come in, Tortuga. There's a little boy who cried wolf calling Tortuga. Little boy who cried wolf telling you we found wolves. Forget it, Martin. Wolves on the move! Okay, check that. We're running with the wolves. Oh, and we're not the only ones. Ravens! Ravens are following them, too. Hey, it helps to have wings to follow wolves because they have a fast pace called a lope. A wolf can lope all day long, covering 160 kilometers with hardly a rest. Now that's what I call a marathon. Hey, what do you call it when they pick up the pace even faster? More tiring? A chase! An all-out run! Woohoo! They're after something! <laughs> Where do they get that kick? I know they can marathon all day, and then sprint when they need to. Come on, he's a predator who attacks. Take it from someone who's been stung. It's the African honeybee. Uh, Chris, is that your nose or are you wearing a tomato on your face? <laughs> I'll always remember, give a bee his space. Cleared for takeoff. Follow that bee to the hive. Don't lose him. I didn't see you! It was an accident! See? The lion's the toughest! Well, taking out the size advantage while giving them extra ferocity points, because while bees are defensive, lions are aggressive predators, we've got a nine! It's too close to call between the lion and the African honeybee. I need more data. Keep your eye on that bee! Oh, the sweet smell strengthens. Honey is near. Hello, honeybees. Hello, honey. There goes the bee. Back to his hive! I couldn't be happier to see green grape and blueberry. Ha! They will help me steal the honey. Oh, 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 oh. Move, Gourmand. Bother the bees and make us look like the bad guys. Hey, Chris, what's the difference between one angry bee and a swarm? About 4,999 stingers. Well, you run for your lives. 
I will visit another hive, and there I will capture the mystery animal on my menu. I'll give you a clue. It has ferocious flavor. It's not over yet, Gourmand. <gasps> not again! I'm gonna get a reputation now for rolling over lions. What? The lion is running from bees? See? Bees are tougher. Whew. Oh, they're going back to the hive. Well, a lion running from a swarm of bees? That gives the African honeybee a bonus point on the tougher meter. And one up on the lion. And Gourmand just got one over on us. You know, for a fry cook, he's got some skill in the wild. Yeah, we gotta figure out a plan to find that mystery animal before he does. Huh, Chris, look at this little bird. <laughs> Are you trying to get my attention? Chris, I think she's trying to tell us something. Uh, Martin, we're on a creature rescue. We don't have time right now to talk to a 20 centimeter tall, brownish, white bellied curve-billed bird doing a special song and dance display. Wait a second. That's a honey guide. She wants to tell us where the honey is. You guys should have eaten more breakfast. Little Howler's mom must have been in the den. Maybe Little Howler has brothers and sisters in there too. Yeah, the mother wolf will spend most of her time in the den with the pups for the first two months. Shh. Coast is clear. Great, we won't get into any trouble. The pack must be out hunting. Oh, I can't wait to see what's going on in there. Empty. Ah, there's no mother wolf, no pups. Why did they all leave? That's why. Because they knew that huge mountain lion had discovered their den site and was a danger to the pups. Uh-oh. Let's get out of here. Wait, don't run. Right. She'll see us as prey. Nothing triggers a predator like prey on the run. We need the power of the pack. Activate wolf power! Nobody's gonna mess with us in our wolf power suits. Uh, tell that to the cougar! Thanks for the hairbrushing. Oh, we can't beat her in the short game for long. Switch to marathon running! On your mark and set, go! She's tiring. A sprinter like her can't keep up the pace for long. Now we've got the cougar beat because we wolves are marathoners. Wow, I feel so light, like I could run like this forever. That's the power of the wolf. Amazing. We've only been wolves for two minutes and already a raven has found us. Well, if he found us, he can find other wolves. And maybe lead us right to Little Howler's pack. Follow that raven. Follow the wolf brothers following that raven. This is awesome. It's like a wolf man and the raven is my sidekick. Maybe the raven thinks it's the other way around. But either way, because wolves and ravens are so tight, I don't think it'll be too long before this raven leads us right to the pack's new <gasps> den site. Uh-oh. So if you wouldn't mind letting me go, that would be great. Ready for testing. Let's run it. Powering up treadmill. Hit the spot thruster, MK. Spot on. Hey, this is feeling pretty smooth. 60 kilometers per hour. All systems functioning. The backbone is really bending. 90 kilometers per hour. Bending too much. 110 kilometers per hour. 
Is this a cheetah racer or a fucking crocodile? Hmm. Might want to take down that backbone bendability a little. I smell mud. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, nice mud in this puddle. <laughs> huh, guys? My Zack Terrain vehicle is complete! Right on time to defeat a very annoying Aviva. Roll me out! Hey! Ah! Not me, me! Me and my ZTV! ZTV Safari Edition! The Cheetah Racer! Race time! Hmm, where's Blur? Yeah, I saw him run away, like a scaredy cat. <laughs> and you should, too. The only place I'm running to is the finish line. When's the last time you saw Blur? Well, let's see. When she tackled me for the third time. Then what? I don't know. She probably got tired of toying with me and went for a nap in the shade. But she's supposed to win this race. I've got to find her. The race is starting in two minutes. <laughs> Here it is, Peregrine Falcon. Activate Peregrine Falcon power. Oh yeah, I've got to get a bird's eye view on this. Find Blur. Cat lover. Polluter. <laughs> on your marks. I can see her whole territory, but no sign of Blur. Get set. my chance. This looks good. Okay, you grab a nap spot, SWAT, and I'll scan the area. This cheetah eyesight is amazing. I can see so far. Cheetahs have one of the best long distance eyesights of any mammal. Warthog at 200 meters. Giraffe at 400 meters. Rhino, two kilometers. Elephants at three kilometers. <sighs> oh, this little spot's what having a nightmare. It's okay, little. Ah, ah, honey badger. Ah, ah, oh. <laughs> A honey badger looks like a cheetah cub. Or a cheetah cub looks like a honey badger. Just never do that again, okay? Like never again. Never ever again. <laughs> this cheetah suit's out of control! Oh! I've heard of charging rhinos, but never anybody charging a rhino. Whoa! <laughs> Spot Swat, there you are. 
Oh, I'm just gonna have to remember who's who. <laughs> you look almost exactly the same. Like, your mimics. <laughs> as long as your heads are down and you're not snarling. <sighs> oh, come on. Not again. I'm not running this time. I'm not running. No way. Huh? <gasps> a black mamba. And now I know why it's called that. Because it's got a black tongue. The black mamba is the only venomous snake in the world that can rise up high enough to sink its fangs into your face. Did I just say what I think I said? Uh, did I ever say protecting a cheetah cub was easy? Yeah! Whoa! <sighs> Tortuga, come in, Tortuga. We've got a battle here between a black mamba and a honey badger, who is famous for eating all kinds of venomous snakes. He eats cobras, but the black mamba is the most aggressive snake in Africa, and it's a big one. Okay, Blur. First I'll get you out of here, then I'll unfreeze you. Come on. Whoa, those dew claws aren't only good for tripping up gazelles, the dew claws also good for all around grabbing. Come on, let's go. A stool. Hmm, that could work too with a fluffy little cheetah cub as a hat. Now Chris can just lead us to the cheetah cub. <laughs> mm. Oh, I'm so oh, I can't. I just. How do you deal with me every day? Let's collect some wow facts on these frogs. Be right there. Hi, guys. Whoa, whoa, that was fast. So, where are the frogs? Well, everywhere. But here's the thing. Every time we take a step, a frog launches into the water. They're a little tricky to get a hold of. That's because bullfrogs have a highly sophisticated, highly developed anti-predator evasion system. Legs that leap. And if you can't catch them, join them! <laughs> Well, from first observation, one thing is obvious. The secret is in the length of those legs. Check it out. A frog's hind legs are twice as long as its entire body. This creature is designed for jumping. Hey, where'd he go? I was just behind him and then he was gone. If I take another step, this bullfrog will jump. And then you can find the answer to your question. Okay, one, two, three, ready. <gasps> Wow! He doubled back! And I think I know why. It's those bass. The frog jumps into the water for safety, but he can't go deep because big fish will eat him. So he cuts back and heads to the shallows. That's how he stays away from land predators and fish predators at the same time. Hey, you two gotta get in here and check this out. Ribbit! Ribbit! Whoa, whoa. Ah. <laughs> We've still got some things to learn about frog powers. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's ready! Whoa, cool boat. Okay, let's race. Look at it, sail! Uh-oh! Spotless! Remember, I want this plane spotless. <laughs> Spotless! <laughs> Cleaner! Faster! leg motion that the frog uses for leaping is also used for swimming. Recoil and push. Never thought about it that way before. Recoil and push. The frog stroke. I've got what I need to get started on programming the bullfrog powers. <sighs> now this will be a simple creature power suit because frog power is all in the legs. Finally, a nice relaxing day of invention. No complications. Did you hear that? 
Over there. Whoa! This is one monster bullfrog. As big as they get. And if you're a kilometer away, you can hear a big frog like him ribbit. Uh, I call it more of a baroop. It's a ribbit. Baroop! Oh, he's not going anywhere, because this is the best spot in the pond. Yeah, he's definitely the one. Well, to be sure, we've got to see those holes he's making up close and make sure they match. Yes, we've got to follow the suspect and catch him in the act. Well, go ahead then, but I'm telling you, he did it. Call that woodpecker! Spy gear ready? Surveillance monitor ready. All are ready. 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 Let's go. Let the spy mission begin. Hey, where'd Chris go? Activate raccoon power. Thanks, buddy. For the ninja spy power of the raccoon. Clever, crafty creatures of the forest. Sounds like he's that way. Okay, I'm in close. Suspect climbing tree. Uh-huh. He uses those special toes, two in the front, two in the back to help with climbing. And the stiff tail feathers brace against the trunk for support. Thanks, Chris. Keep the data coming. So, is he drilling yet? Not yet, but those features are keys to drilling. <gasps> Martin, you in position? He's heading your way. The woodpecker has landed. Oh, yes, he's doing it. He's drilling. Wow, that's fast. His head's a blur. Wow, that's 16 woodpecker pecks a second. Impressive. <laughs> I'm going to call him Headbanger. Look at the wood chips fly. I knew it. I told you. How much evidence do you need? This woodpecker must be drill happy or something. He's just drilling holes everywhere. Hang on, Aviva, not so fast. Something's not right. The holes look different. Yeah, this hole looks different. Hmm. It's bigger, more rectangular. Not like those smaller round holes in the dying trees. Well, if you guys need more evidence, go ahead. But to me, it's case closed. When you're ready to admit that I was right about this guy, you can find me back at the Tortuga. With an analysis of this feather, maybe I'll even have another suit by the time you guys are done. Hey, wait for me! Okay, Chris, Headbanger stopped off at a dead tree. Maybe it's hideout. I'm going in. Nice digs. So this is one of the things you can build with that drilling power. A cozy, safe nest in a dead tree to hide out from bad weather and predators. Oh, and I can see why so many animals use your nest when you're done with it. Wood ducks, bats, lots of birds, raccoons, even squirrels, especially in winter. What? Uh-oh, a pine martin. Oh no, up here, the nest is safe for most predators, but not from that tree-loving weasel. Ah! Oh, go, go, oh no, ah! Yes, <laughs> an exit hole. Oh, pileated woodpeckers build multiple entrances and escapes, brilliant. Uh-oh. Uh, pine martins are squirrel hunters too, bye. Whoa! How? Go, do you read me? I'm here, Martin. Over. Mayday, mayday. I'm being chased. Pick me up in the getaway bike. Hurry. Being chased? By who, Martin? A Martin. Martin? Wait, you're Martin. You're chasing yourself? No, this Martin is. What? Where? No, he wants to eat me. Ah, hurry. Martin wants to eat you? <laughs> Hello? You are Martin. Stop messing around. You know we've got a serious mission here, and all you guys want to do is fool around and play spy. That's it. I'm with Aviva. We're heading back. I'm going to stay and help Chris. 
Okay, catch you later, Aiden. I'm Mark. Now I've heard everything. Run! Okay, Martin. Done playing around? No, it really was a Martin. A pine Martin, and he almost ate me. Oh, forget it. I'll go catch up with Chris. Woohoo! Now this is the way to cruise an African river. Crockback ride. What about the eggs? Huh, I knew this dedication thing was too good to be true. Oh, it's a super hot day. Crocs are cold-blooded, remember? Their bodies take on whatever temperature is around them. So when they get too hot, a croc has no choice but to cool off in the water to survive. Well, she better get back to those eggs fast. She is. Uh-oh. We just have to get past those hippos. What do you mean, get past them? Now that's a cute animal. My kind of creature. Whoa! Crocodiles and hippos both rule these rivers, and hippos are just as tough. Those jaws can bite a three-meter crocodile in half. Let's get out of here, crocodilla! Nice move, Mom. Way to dodge those toughies. Aviva, what are you doing? Hippos are amazing. And able to stand up to crocs like that? I know just the invention we need to keep those crocs in line. No fair. You're favoring the hippos. The croc mom was just minding her own business. The hippos went after her. She's just not a fan of these crocs. Hey, Fred. All curled up and cozy in there. Looking good, little guy. Oh. Wait a second. You're not a guy? Fred's a girl! Koki, come in. Go, Martin. What's the temperature of this nest bin? 30 degrees. Same as almost every day you've been in there. Oh, <gasps> That's it? What's it? The temperature! That's why all the baby crocs are girls. Because of the temperature? Yeah! Crocs become girls or boys based on how hot or cold the eggs are. If the nest is 31 to 34 degrees, they grow into boys. If it's colder or warmer than that, they grow into girls. That's weird. Cool, but weird. Oh, I gotta rename everybody. Okay, let's see. Uh, Crunchina, Chompella, Munchette, Snapperfer, and Frederica. Oh. Oh no! Nest of Mama Croc! Come in, Mama Croc! We've got another egg thief! We're on our way, Martin. Had a hippo delay. Hang tight! Uh-oh! Hurry, Mama! Boom! Oh. Huh? More eggs? A soft-shell turtle! What are you doing laying your eggs right by a crocodile nest? You know, Crocodilla doesn't like anybody messing with her eggs. <gasps> That's it! This turtle knows that if she can secretly get her eggs close to a crocodile nest, they'll be guarded by the Mama Croc, too. It's brilliant! Oh, Chris! Chris, call it off! False alarm! It's a turtle! A turtle? Uh-oh. Crocs will eat anybody they find messing with their nests. Whoa, Crocodilla, slow down, girl! Hurry up! She's coming! Nope! Oh, how do you speed up a turtle? How do you slow down a giant croc? Whoa! Whoa! Take your time! Relax! Yikes! Okay, see you later! Thanks for stopping by! Go, go, go! Whoa! That was a close one. Yep, you can't hold back a mom on a mission. <laughs> My turn, finally. Okay, so there's a father and two teenage monkeys, but no sign of a mother. 
Okay, now this isn't fair. You make me come on a swing with the spider monkey adventure, and now I can't even look. But I don't even see a mother or a baby. Here, let me see. I'll find a baby spider monkey. Come on, bro, gimme! Martin, you're more annoying than a mosquito. Uh, Chris? I think I found them. Knock it off, Martin. I'm not giving you the binoculars. <laughs> Chris, help! I'm being monkey napped! Uh oh. Aviva, come in! Martin's been monkey napped and taken into the realm of the spider monkeys where humans can't climb. Monkey napped? I've heard of cat napped, kidnapped, but never monkey napped. How can a human get kidnapped by a monkey? Martin is bug sized, remember? Uh oh, let's go. Chris, why don't you just climb after them? I might be able to get up there, but those spider monkeys can move through the treetops like the ultimate acrobats. I can't keep up with them. How about fuzz bites? Oh, yeah! Well, this is one way to keep up with the spider monkeys. It's amazing how these monkeys can brachiate, just swinging arm over arm. Arm swinging is as easy for them as walking is for us. Huh? Hmm? <laughs> Uh, hello to you, too. Wow, are you cute. How old are you, anyway? Hmm, only five months old. Tell him from how you're starting to arm swing around on your own. <laughs> yep, I thought so. Whoa, whoa. Uh, I think you spider monkeys might possibly be the best climbers we've ever encountered. Ah! You're welcome. Oh, whew. Unknown canopy bug. Whoa. Excuse me, pardon me, coming through. Whoa! I can't let that bug get away. I think it's an undiscovered species that only lives in the highest treetops and never ventures below. Oh, okay, you win. Spider monkey adventure it is. Did Chris put you up to this? And I think I got a name for you, Grabsy. should be right below us somewhere. Although due to the thick cover of vegetation, it is difficult to get a precise reading. Let's go in there. I'm with ya. Take evasive maneuvers. Mayday, mayday. Whoa! I tend to stick to inventing. Better. Okay, fine. Have it your way. Jeez, what I put up for in the quest for creature knowledge. Your fingers are so long and thin and your thumb is... Wait, you don't have a thumb. Spider monkeys don't have thumbs. Your hand is a natural hook. Hook hands. That's a great feature for arm swinging. Oh, got a text of Eva. I just got a text from Martin. He says, hi, Aviva. Make sure you put hook hands with long fingers that hook onto branches into the spider monkey power suit. Oh, and there's no thumb, so it doesn't get in the way when we arm swing. Thanks, Martin. Hmm, interesting. Uh, Aviva, may I remind you, we're in a tangle of vines 30 meters above the forest floor. Oh, yeah. Not for long. Keep talking so we can get a fix on your location. You know, this isn't fair. I'm the climbing brother, and here I am, stuck in a tangle of vines, and Martin is off swinging through the treetops with the spider monkeys. Ow! Gotcha. Oh, close anyway. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> okay, okay.